Welcome back, Akron fans, to another exhibition match. This time, once again, between Cybernetic Pony and Monkuki. I remain Shadow 333, your commentator. Let us begin. We are on Virtual Plaza again! This looks familiar! So, in case you haven't watched any of my last couple weeks' casts, Virtual Plaza is extremely small. This is the map. This is. Oh, well, okay, assuming I can make the camera not glitch out like that. This is it. This is the map. It's, it's, like I said, very small. It surprisingly plays well, though. For for its size, it's actually not terribly bad. It's been remarkably popular with, especially Cybernetic Pony. But in general, it has been fairly popular. And you see, this is still version 1.5.3. Still even start going on. And very quick factory and importer being built up by... Okay, so this map does does not have the correction it is 300 340 for both players that has not been actually changed so this map is the older setup so three rps plus 300 liquid crystal this will be a fairly quick game or should be a fairly quick game both play well it's already pony very quickly being aggressive which is the thing you really want to do in this map monk on the other hand taking advantage of the amount of resources to double his rps right away before building up anything proper of his own. So we'll see how that pans out. I'm guessing it'll actually pan out fairly well, surprisingly. I know it sounds weird, but given the amount of resources both players start with and the income both players start with, the fact is players are not going to be quite so crippled by a single blow as they normally were, or as they used to be, before the even start change. So even then, it's... Well, it'll be interesting. But I wouldn't be surprised if this actually worked out and it lasted a little while. Anyhow, with... Both players scouting up, seeing what their opponents are up to. Should see what they go for. I'm guessing that Saturday Pony is going to go for Lancers from this factory. And getting an Armory fairly late too. Not surprising, given the size of this map. But I'm guessing Lancers from the factory, maybe ATHCs, but he typically goes for Lancers in this map. So if he didn't, I'd be surprised. Monkuki, on the other hand, probably going to go for Zion Pulsers once again. Though, if he expects Saturday Pony going to go for Lancers, he will go for Teth Pulsers instead. Not a bad idea. I almost recommend just building some Veer class units of both types. Using those for defense. And then, once you're sure what your opponent's up to, switching those to Pulsers on this map. Because the Veer class units are fine for attack power, their weakness is in health and range. And as far as anti air is concerned, Teth Veers have 17 range, so they're actually fine. But that's what I'd say is just. And it looks like Monkuki is doing exactly that. He is waiting with Veer class units. I did say you need more of them. You can't just go with the starting three. You actually do need a few more than just that. Not to mention that was the Teth and Shin Beer that are defending the Zion Beers over to the north, dealing with building more RPs. And never mind, that's gone to the south to help with defense. However, the Teth Beer has gone down. The Shin Beer is still doing okay, and it actually does have range. That's quite a lot of range. For infantry, that is. It has quite a lot of range. Basically, the sniper infantry. But Cybernetic Pony has lost his infantry. This is still. Far from the Impalable Pass, though the Impalable Pass has not come onto the timeline yet. It will very shortly, but not yet. And factory coming up as well. Okay, there it goes. There's the Lancer. Army is still being under production. The Lancer is what Saturday Pony is going for. Mon Cookie, will he go for Teth or Zion Pulsers? If he goes for Teth, he is right. If he goes for Zion, he is not quite as right. He's going to really want to focus on just counterattacking if he's going for Zion. But if he wants defense, go for Teth. He really wouldn't be wrong in going for Zion Pulsers. They're not an unsafe bet, even with Lancers. He could just teleport them around or just move them around. I wouldn't recommend teleportation. That's probably too expensive for this map. But he can move them around, avoid the Lancer, and just attack directly inside Cybernetic Pony's base. Bit of a risky move, but so is building a depot this early on this map when... Okay, maybe like 300 RP, 300 LC to start with, or 3 RPs to start with. I still think this is a little bit too early for a depot. He's still not quite sure what his opponent's going to be up to, ATHCs or Lancers. Lancers, like I said, are a safe assumption, but there's still an ATHC coming up. So, like I said, both are kind of a safe assumption. And instead, he is going for an aerial control center, getting air units himself first before doing anything. So probably going to go for Shin Turchers rather than anything else. That would actually be the safest option. Shin Turchers can take care of Lancers without too much issue. Lancers, without the aerospace upgrade, don't do a whole lot of damage against anything, really. And... They are better against air than against ground, but only comparatively. 
Shinturgers, on the other hand, while better against ground than air, are still fairly powerful against air and fairly tough. Going back to the 149 mark, both players are double checking some stuff. They aren't actually doing a whole lot. Looks like Monku might just be double checking his economy. He is building a resource processor he didn't build before, probably just double checking that he could do that. And Cybernetic Pony is getting advanced structure, or getting advanced structures. He's getting machinery. That's what it's the equivalent of advanced structures for correct me. He's getting machinery. He's probably going to get Tornads fairly soon. That will better punish the use of Shin Turtures, but frankly, Frigus is his only option. Frigus require the Macrofab, the Macrofab requires more money. Not that much more money. He does have actually quite a bit of income right now, but he might want to expand. I never thought I'd see it happen, though, but he might want to expand to one of these corner expansions or possibly the center. He does probably want to develop his main base as best as he can, though, and there is, I believe, room behind here. Let's see. Yes, there is room behind all of these crates to move the RP, so we can actually build crates or build RPs entirely around these crates. So that's not a problem at all. And more Lancers coming in, Tethfear in place to defend against them and chasing them off. Well, that's what I'd expect. Tethfear are, like I said, powerful against air. Though a few more would be a good idea, and a Teth Searcher is forthcoming. The Teth Fear here for defense is a good thing to have. Though Severing Pony probably just scouting. He probably wasn't actually need to do any real damage. Just seeing what Monkuki had. And knowing that Monkuki has an aerial control center is very important to know. Which means he can build a frigate or Well, if he wants to build a frigate, he might do he might do just that. He doesn't have any mechs though. He has no mechs coming up. He has a tornado coming up. That won't help too much. That really won't help too much. It, if he's going for... Oh, and it looks like the Teth... Well, the Teth is dead. And this is the Impelable Past Edge, pretty much. So, yeah. Kind of very dead. Oh, well. The Teth Pulsar, on the, or the Teth on the other hand, will more than make up for it. Getting rid of both... AT, or Actually, the is going to be a problem. But getting rid of both Lancers without too much issue... The DHC is going to pose a huge problem. Separating Pony is going to be able to kill that note. Actually, yeah, having moved that forward, those lances are saved. That kind of sucks. So Mongoogie is going to need to be careful about this. Looks like he's not going for it. Moving back, getting a foundation. Why is he not pushing his Tetra into the depot? I don't know. But he does have a foundation. I guess he's probably thinking that defense. He's probably thinking Separating Pony is going to go for an attack when the Teth Pulse or Teth Searcher is inside the depot and expecting that that's going to work. Which wouldn't be a bad idea, actually. Nice little one-two punch there. But no, that will not work. Well, okay, it might work just because there's only one Teth Churcher compared to two Lancers, two Tornads, and most importantly an ATHC. But I I don't know. I mean, two Lancers coming up. Multiple factories being built. I've Okay, another thing I don't see very much, but I wish I'd see more of, is multiple factories being built. On this map of all places, I'm surprised. Pleasantly, but still surprised. And the Foundation Repair being used to fairly good effect, but still that one Teth Churcher cannot last. The ATHC is just too powerful... It, it's too much for it to deal with. Especially since now the healing is being spread out a bit. The ATC, however, being distracted is good, but not quite enough. That Teth Searcher needs support, needs another Teth Searcher. It needs to be supported by more units, and it doesn't have more units to support it. So there's nothing that can be done. Why is why is Monkey not building that? Is he going for is he going for foundations? I can see that. Is he going for more RPs? Is he going for more units of other types? No, I don't see that at all. He is, however, luring Cybernetic Pony into his base, which is good. The ATHC is not nearby, but it soon will be Cybernetic Pony moving that in, and it will be able to take care of the Teth Tercher without issue, so I think Monkuki is not giving himself... He's not doing himself any favors when it comes to dealing with this. Able to damage the ATHC somewhat, and this Teth Tercher is holding his own nicely with the Foundations. But even then, while making costs, there just aren't enough Teth Terchers for that to count for much. And Cybernetic Pony making the most of fairly cheap units. I mean, the thing is that Lancers are about a third of the cost of Teth Searchers. Like, Teth Searchers cost... No, oh, I can't see on there. Teth Searchers will cost about... They cost 144.60, while Lancers cost somewhere around 16.38. Oh, 18.36. So, yeah, about a third. Well, actually, in terms of LC, it's about a, about a tenth. But in terms of QB, it's about half. Overall, I guess more like a quarter. That's still pretty big, though. And finally, Monkuki able to push away Cybernetic Pony's forces, but at great cost, losing a lot of his foundations 
Each of those being 60 liquid crystals. That was a total of about 240 liquid crystal lost there. Cybernetic Pony did lose a lot of his army. The big losses being the Tornads. But even with that, it's not going to be too much. However, this turret is going down, and that is quite expensive. Monkey jumping back, seeing if he can do anything better, and looks like no, he really doesn't have the energy to do anything better. In fact, no, not even that. He is seeing that Samurai Pony has done something better. However, these Zion Pulsers will be of great benefit, and the Tornado will get an auto defense. Well, as soon as the infantry go down. Once the infantry go down, the Tornado's next. The Tornado will be going down now, and this ATHC will follow soon after with a defense turret. Well, actually, the defense turret's not going to go down. Oh no, it is! It does, it is spotted. That Zion Pulsar is able to see it even with the Zion Veer dead. So that is not going to last. Very nice, that. I'm not sure what's providing his vision, though. Oh, okay, it's the Aerial Control Center. Apparently it has a very wide vision radius. I'm surprised I don't know that. Anyway. Normally vision, like, that sort of artillery vision defense thing isn't as big of a deal. But on Virtual Plaza, every little bit counts, which one of the, might be one of the reasons why this map is so popular, because little things like that count. It's really important that you take care of the details like that. It, I mean, this is a knife fight, this is a phone booth knife fight to end all phone booth knife fights. And when you're in one of those matches, you really have to be careful of every single move. Which, Monkuki clearly isn't quite as careful as Cybernetic Pony is, it would seem. Though I would not be surprised if there were some species disadvantages on a map this size, just because it does lend itself better or better to rushing, but with the even start change, I'm not sure. I mean, either it's not like the players one of the players is gonna have zero economy entirely based on their starting resources. Everyone's gonna have economy, everyone's gonna have income. That does even things out nicely. Maybe not enough, but it help it does help. Oh, and apparently Monkuki is rather disappointed with this game as a game. Which, I can't say I blame him, yeah. So, this is looking bad for Monkuki. And clearly he's, I'm saying in the chat he's not particularly proud of this, but I'm not surprised and I can't say I blame him. Looks like Monkuki was going, let's see, is he getting, oh, he's getting housing class. Interesting choice, though, on a map like this, it could pay off a Teth Halcyon. A good Teth Halcyon would actually take care of all these units. Or at least tank enough for the Teth Turcher and Teth Veers to take care of them. However, he may be going for Shin Halcyon instead. An interesting choice if he does so, but a little bit risky. Shin Halcyons are pretty jack-of-all-trades, but they are actually powerful at being jack-of-all-trades. They are, however, not especially cost-effective. They're still powerful, they're just not the most powerful for cost. However, with good support, they could pay off. And given that Cybernetic Pony is almost entirely invested in anti-ground, not anti-air, the ATC being his only real anti-air solution, and the tank now, it wouldn't be a terrible idea to have a Shin Halcyon, but then again, a Teth Halcyon would take care of these things no problem. Take care of the Tornados no problem, and the ATCs and tanks, though, it wouldn't deal with them quite as well. So I guess Shin Halcyon isn't a bad move. But no, Zion Halcyon and Teth Halcyon. Better move still. Zion Halcyon takes care of the ground. Teth Halcyon takes care of the air. I wasn't sure at the time when he started building if he had enough resources to do that, but he does. And forward he moves. Both players at Tier 3 on Virtual Plaza. What in the world is going on? Tier 3 in Virtual Plaza. And it looks like Cybernetic Pony is... Actually... No, he's pushing back nicely. The Teth Halcyon able to heal up and get rid of this Tornade. The Zion Halcyon nicely taking care of the ground forces... The MFP being first priority target, being a healer, but with that gone, now everything else is done. And note that Zion Halcyons can hit air, and they are fairly powerful against air. So, at this point, this was the best choice that Monkey could have gone for, and it's worked out nicely. Though he has Zion Halcyon, is going to go down. That's a shame. He needs to save that. He actually, actually, from his point of view, he's fine. Never mind. <laughs> Looks like, from his point of view, Cybernetic Pony actually hasn't attacked that hard yet. But from Cybernetic Pony's point of view, he is definitely attacking hard. This is the edge of the unplayable past, and this is probably the last thing we're going to see. This tank, however, not doing too much. Cybernetic Pony retreating instead. No, this is his point of view, and he has, in fact, retreated. He's decided that he will take the better part of Valor, but Monkey will not let him. Instead, Monkey going for a counterattack, pushing hard, which 
maybe is undoing, we'll see. Also, clearing out these middle expansion approaches, I just pointed that out. These crates here are quite weak and can be easily damaged to shorten the rush distance just that much more. Which is going to happen accidentally. Not at all intentionally, but still the splash damage will cause this very event to happen. I'm not sure if the players are aware of this. But yeah, you can shorten the rush distance by getting rid of these. It was a small... I kind of wanted to have it expand across the entire length, but you can't target boxes in the Fog of War. So I decided just to have it expand across most of it to increase the rush distance, but not make your have to go around this corner or that corner of the map. Probably for the best, really, otherwise it would have been a weird imbalance of air and ground rush distance. But it looks like Monkuki is falling behind again, and he doesn't... He's getting another Zion Halcyon. He needs to save that, though. The Halcyon class especially need to not die. But unfortunately, it just did. Zion Beer is still around, but the Halcyon class, due to their cost, need to not die. It is imperative that they don't die, because... They're about 133.90 each at that stage. Oh, 163.72. 133.90. No, there's nothing that costs that anymore. What am I thinking of that? I was thinking of old costs. But still, somewhere in that range. Somewhere around 130, 100. And 130 LC, 100 QP, roughly. Jump them into the depot to make cost, really. That's what you have to do. Or nearly have to do. If they're on their own like this, Monkey, however, not doing so. He could, but he isn't. And it's kind of hard to choose when to do so because the Chronauts will deal a lot of damage to the base while the Zion Halcyon is repairing. And the Zion Halcyon will take a little while to repair. It's not going to be the quickest repair job, but it is kind of necessary for it to make cost well. Because this point actually hasn't done any meaningful damage other than shorten the rush distance to the base along the south side. And no, Monkuki not saving it. I don't think he had a chronology with which to do so, but still, he didn't. He did not do that. Very important that you do that. Probably just a lapse in judgment on Monkuki's party. Probably isn't. He, I'm sure he knows you can do that. I'm sure he meant to do that. He probably was just getting lapsing in concentration in 40 minutes into a game in Virtual Plaza. I'm surprised this lasted this long. I am really surprised. I'm not sure if this is a testament to the power of even start or just the power of even start on maps that haven't had their economy tweaked and the starting resources tweaked to take into account. But that was... Well, that was the game. Okay. Monku gets surrendered and we have seen what even start... Maybe what even start can do, but definitely a new take on Virtual Plaza. Surprising take on Virtual Plaza. I hope you enjoyed that and that will be it for tonight. So thank you for watching and have a good night, everybody.